Hi and welcome to this uh, video. My name is Björn and I'm here to show you how you can use SharePoint Designer workflows to create documents in your site and, and to actually fill those documents with uh, with content. And, and the reason why I want to do this is that uh, well, a while back I, I created a, a video that explained, you know, a, or at least gave an overview of a massively complex series of workflows that, uh, you know, gathered data from various different users and then uh, <clears throat> had a ton of complexities and, and uh, when people saw that video they were you know they what they wanted to know was not how that workflow was built but actually how i i got that uh, that document to, to show the data that was gathered throughout the uh, the workflow so that's why i'm creating this video now to show you sort of the magic behind uh, behind that and there are actually a few quirks that you need to be aware uh, right now i have a default uh, team site there's uh, there's nothing special about this at all and i also have sharepoint designer obviously because we want to use that and i also have a a default installation of Word and then the reason why it's, it's important that it's default is that there are actually some quirks that you need to to do if you want to or to to circumvent if you want to uh, to get this technique to work so, so basically, the first thing I want to do is to start creating a new content type, uh, just because you know content type are immensely cool, and we can can use those to to create some some amazing uh, solutions here. And and what I want to do is I would just want to create a, a custom document, uh, and I'll inherit from from the uh, default uh, content type, uh, default document content type, and, and that allows me to sort of add new new columns or, or any type of, of data to this uh, document. Just uh, use the default here. And then um, let's just add, uh, add um, a new column here so we know what, that we have something we can add. Let's call this uh, department name because department is actually a, a, a reserved word here. Uh, and I'll click OK. We'll just accept the default here. So, so now we have a, a, a two columns, the title and the department name that we want to, to use in our, our um, documents. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go into the shared documents and I want to make this content type available. I'll do that by going to the library settings and I'll go to advanced settings and then I'll enable management of content type. The only thing that actually does is make sure that we can, can manage the content type. You, you're always using content types anyway, but uh, now you can actually, as you can see here, manage them. You get this, this uh, section on the, uh, the uh, document library uh, page settings page that allows you to modify the uh, content types. So I'll add one uh, from uh, add a new content type from existing types. This will be the uh, custom doc that we just created. I'll just hit OK to add that and make that available on the uh, the document library. So uh, the first thing I want to do, and this is one of those uh, well, weird features that you need to just uh, get around. Uh, if you now go into advanced settings, because we're inheriting from the default content type, we actually get a, a document template um, sort of uh, um, free, of, free of charge when we inherit from that uh, the default content type. Uh, and that's nice because we, you know, we don't need to create our own. Uh, well, and it's not nice because, well, first of all, it's blank. And the other thing is that it's actually named .x. Uh, and that's going to pull a problem for us. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to rename this to docx. Now if we try to do that we can edit this template here. If we try to do that so we'll first get a warning that we there's some problem if we try to open it and then we get an error message from from uh, Word telling us that you know this isn't going to happen. Uh, and then obviously all of the, the um, uh, suggestions that are listed here doesn't help at all. What you need to do is actually turn off the protected view of these documents. The way to do that is to go to the back backstage view by hitting the file button. We'll go to options and we'll go to trust center uh, and go to trust center settings uh, and then we'll have this protected view tab on the left side here. We just want to disable the top two uh, items on the protected view. And then we'll hit OK until we're back in, in Word. And now we can actually go in and we can start editing the, the template that we, we have available here. Now the problem here is that because this, this template is a template and not a document, uh, we're going to have some problems if we try to generate uh, automatically generate new documents based on this, um, this uh, template. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to rename this into docx. We can't actually do that directly inside the SharePoint. So what we need to do is we want to save this uh, as uh, 
uh, as another type. And the way to do that, we'll just hit save as, and then we'll just change the save as type from, from uh, Word template to Word document. We can just save it. Uh, and then when we go back into our content type now, we can upload this new document template. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's called docx or .x, um, at least not to SharePoint. It does matter when we try to open the document afterwards. So, so just make sure that you, you rename your document templates to, to docx. So we'll go back into, oh, there's a bug in, uh, in IE here. So let's just try to do that upload again. And now we see our template document here. We'll open that and we'll hit uh, OK. Uh, and now, as you can see, if we go into advanced settings, you'll see that it's now named uh, docx. So now we can start editing this template. Uh, and then uh, obviously, it's going to work just the same as it did before. Uh, and, and what we want to do here is we want to start adding some content. Uh, now, because this is a template, we're not going to, to add the actual content that we want to, to the user to add for us. We'll just add, uh, add placeholders for those, uh, those uh, columns that the user is going to add. So so let's start with that department department uh, like that uh, and we want to insert as I said the column whatever the user adds as the column and the way to do that is to go to the insert tab on the uh, ribbon and we'll go to quick parts and now you can see we have a document property option here and that will list all of the uh, the uh, content types or columns that is in the content type there's actually far more than we, we have available here but some of them are built into word as well so if we just select uh, department name now, you'll see that this is now a, a placeholder for what the user will add at, as the department name. And then we can actually format this uh, this placeholder and then whatever formatting we do here, now we made it bold and we can underline it and we can increase font sizes and all that sort of stuff. Um, that will affect the entire placeholder and whatever the user adds there. So we can't actually go in and, and modify parts of that uh, that content. But basically, we now have a very simple template. We can save that, and that'll upload now to the uh, the back to our SharePoint server. So whenever we now create new documents based on this custom doc uh, content type, um, it will use this new template that we we just added. So let's try to see if we can make this happen inside SharePoint uh, Designer. So the first thing to do is we want to connect to the site. We'll go to the workflows tab and then we'll uh, create a new site workflow. Uh, let's just for the sake of this example, just call this create document. I'll make this a site workflow because then I don't need to run it on a particular site at all. And I'll, uh, oh, there's actually one, uh, that's the, uh, the um, test that I did earlier to verify that everything worked, uh, create custom document instead. So just hit uh, OK. Uh, and now we can start uh, start um, uh, building our workflow. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is to gather some information from the user. We can do that in the initiation form parameters. So let's just uh, call this uh, add a new filter and call this uh, department. We'll have a single line of text. Doesn't matter really what we add here. Uh, so the user will be asked to provide a department when we when he instantiate the or initiate the the workflow. Uh, and and we want, what we want to do in the actual workflow is to create a, a new list item. And the way we want to, or uh, the, the reason why we want to create a list item is that uh, documents in, in SharePoint are actually list items. A document, a document library is a list just like any other list. It has some you know, behind the scenes magic to make it behave like a document library, but it is actually just a list. And thus, all the documents stored in there are also uh, documents uh, or, or list items. So when you're creating list items, we are actually creating a new document as long as we ensure that we do that with the appropriate content type. So first, let's select which uh, document library we want to, to create this in. You see here that we're asked to provide a, a content type. Uh, we want to modify this to ensure that we're building our custom doc uh, content type instead. We need to provide a, a path and name. So let's just make this really simple and just uh, type in something here. Obviously, it would... Um, wouldn't do that in a production environment because you you know uh, overwrite the uh, the uh, document name or the document all the time. You can actually at the bottom here you can see you have something called file name conflicts and that allows you to set a unique identifier which is basically a GUID uh, append that to the file name when you're creating um, documents that uh, the name is already in use. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to set that department name uh, field uh, column that we we had in our content type. 
and we'll use a we'll use a workflow lookup and we'll look for the uh, initiation form parameter that we added which was called uh, department and we'll set that uh, department name column in the content type or in the document to that initiation form parameter value so when we hit ok now um, and we'll hit ok again we have created a you know dirt simple uh, workflow that'll just create a new document item it'll serve our purpose here so i'll um Oops. Uh, so it actually seems like there was some kind of problem. I have no idea what that was, but basically now I've, I've published it and it's uh, it's available. Maybe that uh, may may have been that name conflict we we saw in the beginning. Doesn't matter. Let's go to our uh, site again and go to all site content. That's where we launch our, our site workflows. And we'll see we have our new create uh, custom document workflow here. So when we launch that, uh, it'll you know ask us for department. Let's just call this, uh, this is for the HR department. We'll start the workflow. It doesn't do anything useful, so it's done really quick. Uh, and now we can go to our home tab and we can see that we now have our new document added. And when we open that uh, document now, you'll see that the uh, the value that we entered into the initiation form parameter has been added to our, our document. So that's basically what I want to show you in, in this video.